<laughs> don't talk to me about that. Don't talk but to you're me about right. Don't you're talk right, to me you're... about Wednesdays. Don't talk to me about Thursdays. That's the struggle that makes your brain tired. don't talk to me tired. about Sundays. <laughs> I know you hate Sundays. Don't talk to me about Sunday. There's no reason why you should have us out there. You want us out there? Come, come fly out. And do the fucking show with me at seven. And see how miserable it is to miss every flight by one hour. Because that's so true. You one hour. Yes. You can't even take a fucking red eye in this country anymore. There needs to be more midnight. The flights. last flight out of LAX is twelve fifty nine. When I was growing up, you could take a three thirty to Chicago. Jack. You're right. Actually, three thirty in the morning. Three thirty to yeah. Chicago. You could take it. They didn't close Holy airports. Shit. You were flying into that motherfucker all night long, Jack. So right. You could take a four a.m. to Miami. It is interesting, though, because you're so right. I mean, like, it exhausts you. You just want to make art. That's it. I get so tired because my brain, I'm so overwhelmed with all the business side of everything. Everything's a business and everything's, and all you want to do, I have a book and a job one time. Guys, you come out here, you're fucking broke. You're fighting every month you're fighting. So broke. Okay, you break it down to the month, and then you learn to break it down to the day. I was down to the day. I lived for the day. I had it down to it's the day. You don't know what's going to happen. Because I had this little promoter that used to call me, this big, fat, black dude. And he'd always give me a gig and always go, I got a deposit for you. And he always, me and Felipe, we used to always take his 500. And then he'd call us up and he'd go, dog, I canceled the gig. And then he calls back two weeks later and go, listen, I got another date. All right, send us a deposit. You motherfuckers ain't right. No, dog, that deposit. You got to have it. Yeah, it was for yeah. the date you fucking banged the South for before. Do you know how broke I was when I first moved to L.A.? I got this shithole studio apartment. In, now it's like where the Target is in West Hollywood, Santa Monica and La Brea. Back then, it was so ghetto. It was all hookers and crackheads. You know where the Target is? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember before they even had the before fucking Target Before the Target thing. was there. Yeah, this was like uh, 11, 12 years ago, right? I was so broke. I rented this place. I sight unseen because I need an. I have one day to find an apartment. I was in my car, sleeping in my car, so I rent this place. It was Section Eight housing. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know. It had a pool though. That's why I took it. It was the only place I could afford with a pool. So I was like, "Fuck it, I'll take it." The pool, by the way, definitely had like AIDS swimming in it. Like it was the grossest, dirtiest pool. I take this apartment. I have no furniture. I go in there with an air mattress. I had a TV tray for like a quote desk. No TV, nothing. I'm sleeping on the floor on the air mattress. After a couple days, I go to the grocery store to buy food. I waited like three days. I had no money to get paid for a job. I go to buy food. I come home with all my groceries, and I realize that I didn't have a fridge. Because apartments in LA don't always come with no, a fridge. No, they don't come with a fridge. But I didn't even notice some there was them, no fridge. Some of them don't come with stoves. Yeah, I was so exhausted from just like moving here, and I was already auditioning. Like I hit the ground fucking running, like auditioning, acting classes. I spent all my money on that. I come home with these fucking two bags that I like walked home seven blocks, and I get there and I have no fridge. So then I all my shit went bad because I couldn't afford a fridge. And then like a week later, I bought like a dorm fridge off some dude off Craigslist for like 20 bucks that had like mold growing in it. I was so poor, but I was the happiest I'd ever been. Like I lived like that for six months with no furniture, but I was doing I started doing stand up and I got lucky and I booked a, a gig right away on a TV show just one day. But so I felt like, oh. I'm in the right place. I'm going to make it. They already love me. I booked a job. And then after that, I booked nothing for like two years. That's how you make Yeah. <laughs> and I was so poor. I booked a pilot, a fucking commercial, and something else. And then the well dried up. I couldn't fucking book a headshot. And my manager was really good at the time. And I broke up with that girl. Me and her got into a fight in the fucking street. And I took a flight to Miami like a week later. And I stayed in Miami for six weeks and just house emceed. And he paid me like 300 a week. I stole like 400 a week. <laughs> How I did you him. steal money? Don't ask. You know what I'm saying? Don't he has his way these skills. Cake. How? It was fucking craziness. And then, uh, you know, you, so I was telling, I, when I first got here, I couldn't find an agent. So I had a sign with an agency called The Coloring Book. It was two <laughs> black chicks. One was a really badass attorney, though. Bad, lethal, lethal. Yeah. Like, whenever she booked you a job, you were getting paid, like, paid. That's good. Because she knew all the numbers. Is she still an agent? I'll take her. No, they both <laughs> left. The one agent, that was my agent, I loved her dearly. Her husband cheated on her with a white chick, so she moved back to D.C. with the kids. And the <laughs> other one, the husband cheated on her with a white chick, 
and she moved back to Atlanta. So they they used to keep in touch for years. If you ever get something, let us in on it. But the reason why I stopped talking to her, and I really liked her, was because when reality got really hot, I was here right before the boom. Oh. Rogan was already on Fear Factor the first year, yeah. and it was off and running. Yeah, I was with this agency called P.J. Linder and Associates. They were a host <laughs> agent. Let me tell you something. Every day... They had Mike Cuban ass out. Spanish shows. That's dope. American shows. They didn't give a fuck. And one of the shows, well, they got me a meeting with this guy. I don't know what his name was, but he was gayer than fuck. <laughs> and I started talking, talking, talking. And finally he goes, you know what? When you speak, it just, my soul, and he's telling me all this shit. He, goes, he was in it. love with you. He goes, this is what we're going to do. We're going to... <laughs> Did you get casting couch? Please tell me. Please no, tell no, me. No, no, no. Come back to my hotel. I want to show you some scripts. No, Can I jerk off in front of a plant? Listen to me. He, uh, <laughs> he was he was really soft guy. He looked like not a tough guy, but he looked like a little assertive guy. But after ten minutes, I just broke him. What do you mean? All the feathers came flying out. Of what, wait, what do you mean you broke him? Because I was telling. He was asking me stories, <laughs> and I was telling him stories about my childhood. And he was kind of like getting teary eyed and shit. And I broke him. Like, I broke And he goes, Oh my God, I, I kind of grew up the same way. I was, you know, I was, and I'm like, Oh, this guy's gay. And fucking, I didn't give a fuck. It had nothing to do with me. He was one of the first people that really listened. And he goes, You know what? I have these friends. And he got right in front of me. He got on the phone. He goes, Hey, man, you guys still putting that game together, that game show? And they go, We're thinking about it, but we had a bump. And he goes, What's the bump? And he goes, well, we don't know who to cast. Who we really want wants a lot of money. And he goes, who you want to cast is sitting right in front of me. What game show is this? It was a game show where you go out to dinner with your husband and we burglarize your house. <laughs> Shut up. Something just That's fucking, a game show? This is, this is, it was like a reality. How do you like, win? You have to win your it stuff. Was like a mock, it was like a mock <laughs> That sounds amazing. Show. It was NBC. It was fucking MB. At that time, they didn't know what was going to happen. You burglarized the so house? So they were, not me, 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 not me. Hold on. So they were picking up, they were picking up everything. Okay, quickly. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what reality was going to buy. They didn't know that the, the Bachelorette was going to be popular. Sure. They did not know these things. So this was a slash, what, what do you call those things? What are those cars that are half electric, half fucking Hybrid. Desk? This was going to be a hybrid show. I this might have seen this. Two, is this the no, one? no, no. You never seen that. Oh, <laughs> this is that a show in like the early two thousands with two guys who were breaking into houses but and showing you, no, 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 no. Yeah. you how guys how would break, break in. in. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.